Hey, this is Brother Jeff, and I'm going to show you how to get started with the new Captivate Interactions inside of the template library. Now, to get to the Captivate Interactions, all you have to do is click on Activities, and then come down to Captivate Interactions. As soon as you click on Captivate Interactions, you'll see all the different uh, Captivate Interactions available, and there will be more added on as uh, time goes on here. And uh, if you select one of these interactions it'll give you a preview of how the interaction works and so you can get a sense of how this is going to work if you download it and use it inside of Captivate. Now to download it if you're logged in you'll see a download button all you have to do is click on download and this will download a Captivate CPTX file to your desktop or to your downloads folder wherever you have that saved by default in your email or in your uh, web browser set, uh, settings preferences. And uh, from here, uh, you can see on my desktop, there it is. All I have to do is double click on it, and this will open it up inside of Captivate for me. Let me go ahead and rearrange my screen here so I can see this a little bit better. Now, anything on my screen, um, I can come in and I can edit. So I can come into the master slide, if I click on master slide, and I can change the, um, the image that's here, I can change the color, uh, if I come over to the master slide, you'll notice that I have a background image, which is the stripes. I also have a stage color that I set as well. I can change that to however I want. So if I want to come in here and change it to a dark blue um, or any other color, all I have to do is come into the master slide and change that for the background. Now, once I want to change anything on the page, like if I wanted to come in here and change one of the colors on one of these smart shapes, all I have to do is select the smart shape come in here, un select the fill, and then come in and change the gradients. And so if I come in here and start changing it to maybe a red gradient, let's go ahead and do that real quick. So I'm just going to pick some random colors here. You'll notice it automatically updates my button now. Um, and now I would just have to go through and add on that red gradient to, uh, I would save it if I select the button here come over to the fill. If I click on this button down at the bottom, add to custom gradients, um, this will save it to my gradients so I can quickly just select the other ones, select the fill, and select that gradient so I don't have to um, go through and apply it to all four stops. I just apply it to the ones that I, or I just select that button and it will apply the same gradient to all of the buttons that I have selected here. So I'm going to come into my timeline, and now I can come in and uh, select any content that I want. So I can just double click on the text, and if I wanted to switch this to introduction, header, and then come into the text here, just double click in the text, and let's just go ahead and select that text, delete it, and now we can just type in any text. Welcome to this interaction. And that will start, um, then I can start typing out my text, and I have all this room to work with. Now you don't have to use all that room and you can add shapes and uh, different things to this group and um, and then basically whenever this is shown um, and same goes with tab one tab two you can add content additional content to these different groups and I'm going to show you how to do that so if I want to come into tab one the best way to do this let me go ahead and bring up my timeline over on the bottom left hand side I can hide and show different tab groups so you can see that I hid the intro content and now I am showing content one. So this is what's going to show during content one. And I can still change the text however I want. Um, but the best way to, if I wanted to add an image or a shape and I wanted to only show when content one is showing, uh, the best way to do that is to group that into the tab one content. Now, the way that you group is go ahead and add your shape I'm going to add my shape here. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to select this. Let me go ahead and bring this down a little bit more. I'm going to select that shape, and then I'm going to select my group. And now I'm going to go ahead and hit Command-G for uh, if you're on a Mac, or Command or Control-G if you're on a PC, which is basically um, just, I think, under Edit. Yep, under Edit, and then go to Group. You can do it that same way as well. Let me move this over here now. And you can see that down at the bottom, it is within my tab underscore one underscore content. I have this smart shape in there. So one other thing that I have to do in order for this not to show at the very first is uncheck where it says visible in output. 
That way, if I preview this, this will only be, be visible once that group is selected and shown. So you'll see here the introduction header, that uh, star is not showing for me. But as soon as I select tab one, that star, the smart shape, or if this was an image, will show with that content text. And so that's how I add in an image or add in shapes or additional content that's outside of these two text boxes, basically. So now I can come in here and I can start doing the same thing for other ones. So if I come into tab one, and I'm just gonna, for uh, viewing purposes, I'm gonna go ahead and hide tab one, and I'm going to show tab two. And uh, the tab two content, I could do the same thing, replace my text, add in images, or add in shapes, or anything like that. Um, and then I can go and uh, I can um, add in additional content for all the seven groups here. Now if I don't want a tab to be shown, all I have to do is basically move that off stage. So if I just move it off stage, that will not be shown in the output once I publish out. And so now I only have six uh, tabs instead of seven tabs. Now the final thing is if you want to change what happens when this button gets clicked or you want to add on additional actions, you'll notice once I have this button selected, I can come over to the actions section here and you'll notice that it runs, uh, it executes an advanced action and the script is make tab underscore one underscore visible. And so if I come into my advanced actions, which is under project and then advanced actions, this will show me my action. So I can select under existing actions. I can select that action that I want to edit. And now this is where you can see what's happening here. So we have um, tabs or the content showing and then any other content that may be visible hiding at that time. As well as we're applying an effect, which is uh, we're setting the alpha to 60%. Now if I want to adjust that to not be 60%, I wanted to adjust it to be something different, I can do that here as well. Or I can completely delete that effect and add on my own action. So if I click on add action, click on the drop down box, let me go down to the um, apply effect. Then I can select the drop down box and I can select what I want to actually apply the effect to. So content one text, um, come in, change the alpha, change the uh, whatever content that I want at that, or ap apply whatever effect that I want at that point. And then from here, all I would do is click on update action, and this will update this action so I'll have additional functionality that will happen when this button is clicked as well. Now, if you wanted to, at the end of this interaction, you could add a continue button, and that continue button will go on to the next page or will go on to the next uh, scene or wh whatever you have uh, or whatever you want for that action. But that's how you download the Captivate interactions. That's how you uh, change some different elements, button colors, add different things to the content areas. Um, and then at this point, you would just come up to file once you have all of your other pages done publish and then you can select either uh, flash or html5 or both and this will publish to html5 and flash um, depending on what you're wanting to do and depending on the capabilities of captivate at the time um, and then you can just get this out to your learners at that point so that's how you get started with the new e-learning brothers captivate interactions